everything is a chess move. Like you either you either ten steps ahead, two steps, or you got a checkmate. But actually, we're playing over here. But I'm just curious about why you play chess, why you like it, what what it does for you. Oh, you want to hear all that? I learned how to play in jail. Really? Yeah, well, I was just talking to another guy about that. He was like, chess is the only thing that keeps you out of jail. That gang activity out your head. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps you from going to jail, you know, and keep you, keep you with a mellow attitude too, you know? And even if you go to jail, you can still play in jail. You sure Past right, the time. man. They got some gangsters. <laughs> They got some bad boys over there. They know how to play really? some chess. Are there ever times in jail when you're playing chess that you don't want to win? Because you're like, if you I win against win. this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to win just betting. I know in jail it's like segregated up by groups, right? Did they ever use chess between the groups or was no, it it's within the group, dude, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you're mad and angry at somebody, if you play chess, you won't even think about it. Can't be busy. Keeping your mind yeah, busy, right? Keeping my mind busy. Is it like hitting a punching bag or is it just you're so absorbed in it? It could be the same thing, but <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah. Where were we? Okay, so you were talking about points, something so yeah, I a, never considered. So there's a point system. Let me start over. Mm -hmm. You know how pawns move. They're, they move one at a time. Very first move, you can move two forward. These are worth one. One point, these are the little soldiers. Not very valuable, but at the same time, if you know how to use them and promote to a queen, they're very valuable. Um, knights and bishops, they're both worth the exact same. Um, a lot of people say that bishops are about 0.2 points, so it's like a 3.2, and this is about a 3.0 when it comes to points, because two bishops in the end game is substantially better than somebody who has a bishop and a knight or two knights. And have they worked this out by studying a lot of the highest level games and seeing which pieces? Exactly. Uh, well, it's interesting because when this game was made, these pieces represented facets of society that would have been more or less valuable. And it's interesting that it looks like the order is queen, you gotta keep women happy. Yep. Second is castles, well, gotta, we gotta have the home, then religion, bishops, then knights, the army, and then pawns, which I guess is us. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amazing way to look at it. Yeah. Um, I will correct you though, I think the king is more important because if you lose the king, you lose the game. Right. You can lose the queen and not lose the game. Hear that, ladies? Rooks are worth five, and queens are worth nine or ten, depending on who you talk to. Okay. Um, and you know how all of these pieces move? Yes. So I can demonstrate really fast. The bishops, they can go diagonal as far as they want in any direction, all the way. Mm -hmm. The rooks, they can go vertical or horizontal as far as they want to go, all the way. Yep. That's why these things are valuable. The knight is two forward and one to the left, or two forward and one to the right, in any direction. So these are very odd because they form like an octopus all around them of places that they can attack. Uh, the cool thing about the knight is it is the only piece that can hop over other pieces. And that's about it, man. I mean, the, uh, the queen can move diagonal or horizontal as far as it wants to go, because it's basically a bishop and a rook combined. And the king is like the queen, where it can go in any direction, diagonal or horizontal, um, but just one square. Okay. And that doesn't seem very valuable in the beginning of the game, because there's so many other powerful pieces on the board. But once you get to a higher level and you exchange pieces and you get down to say two pawns versus two pawns and a king, the kings become very, very powerful if you know how to use them. So here's how we decide who gets what. I'm black. You're black, you wanna go second. Okay. Respect. That gives them a slight disadvantage, and I'm all for it. But once you go black, you never go back. That's what I've found. Okay. <laughs> These are backwards. Oh, okay. But awesome. Close. Okay, so I'm gonna go first. Now tell me, that's already interesting to me. I never know how people decide their first move. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of different opening moves. Um, the two strongest is to take the king's pawn and move it two forward. 
One, because it grabs a bunch of space in the center, which is very important in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, once you get, say, two pawns dead center, these are attacking all four of these squares and mm -hmm. kind of like pinching down on your position and keeping you from spreading out on the board. Mm. Um, kind of an ideal opening is you get these two pawns out, these two knights here, roughly, and then you get your bishops out into a position where everything's controlling the center and attacking all these pieces out in the front. Mm. So, in general, this is like, obviously these, there's a lot of variations where this structure will never happen. Um, and a lot of times it may or may not be ideal, but this is the main gist of it is you want to take control of the center, you want to get your pieces out, uh, get your queen up so that you can castle. And once you castle, your king's protected. King safety is number one in chess. So make sure your king is safe first, then attack their king and try to checkmate them or try to win through a positional game. Most sports, if, if people don't know in games, are based on military strategy, something you read in like Sun Tzu's Art of War. And from what I've heard about armies, when you get cut off or you have weak points, that's what the enemy exploits. But if you can sort of ride through your enemy like an arrow point, just dominating the middle, it's hard to lose. Totally. And, but then there's situations where, say I try to take control of the center, um, like there are situations where I take control of the center and then you kind of lock down the center and now this is like a position. Whoa, it's like a sand trap now. Yeah, so this is a position where the center is locked down and you can start to launch attacks on the outside to swarm me on one side of the board or the other once this is nullified. Okay, so if people only learn one thing from this, I'm glad it's this. There's really no reason not to start out by either trying to lock down the center or own the center. For the so most part. For most of us, one of these four pieces is going to be the first move. Absolutely. Okay. I, like, one of the worst moves that you can make in chess is you move this pawn forward, opening up your king, and for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. A lot of times, the king side, these pawns, you don't really, as a beginner, want to move them, especially this pawn specifically. Okay. And, here's, right. and here's why. Say you move, I don't know, this pawn forward. And say I'm like an absolute donkey and I do something like this and I move this pawn forward. Then you can immediately put your queen here and you just checkmated me. <laughs> you just the checkmated fastest me. Fastest game ever. You just checkmated me on the second move. And you have to be a complete idiot because it's the fastest way you can lose the game. Got it. So if you never move the king side pawn, the one to the right of the king side pawn forward, you'll win way more games. All right, at least we know what not to do. That's an important place to start. So you're gonna go first. So I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna push. Um, one of the most common openings is you push the king side pawn forward. I'm gonna do that just for demonstration. The reason you wanna do that is because it opens up your bishop to get out, your queen to get out, and then obviously your knights can get out really quickly. Yep. Um, so it's like a really effective and strong move that one of the best grandmasters of all time, top three, Bobby Fischer, he, he played this all the time. Yeah. It was one of his favorite moves for good reason. It makes too much sense. So once you're that good, a lot of times you do fewer things. It's almost like a jujitsu grandmaster who just always arm bars because you're like, it doesn't matter if I get creative, this works. Totally. Yeah. I would say like 90% of the games, 95% of the games, they're playing solid positional chess rather than attacking chess and reckless chess. Mm. There are exceptions. Those chess grandmasters can play perfect attacking chess, but it's rare that the other grandmaster is going to allow it. Like, two snakes try to squeeze each other to death slowly. Like, that's, that's kind of what chess is like. Which makes it the most sadistic game of all time. When you're playing a four-hour chess match, and you are starting to win, and you see it in your opponent's eyes that they recognize that they are losing. Hey, knock it off. It's a slow vice grip and a slow death over the next hour and a half. Whoa. And you get the satisfaction of watching them just slowly get demoralized into a loss. Only thing more sadistic than that is Monopoly. Probably. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Tell me if this is a good move. I'm gonna do this. That's not bad. Not bad, right? Because I can still bada boom. I can still well, this uh, is, take this, my queen up this way. Oh no, this is your king. So your queen would go forward like that. Yeah, exactly. So I don't have two moves like you do, but I've got one good one. Yeah, and that's not bad. 
So I'm just gonna keep taking control of that center. Okay. Honestly, just as long as you don't move this pawn, yeah. it won't be terrible. Got it. So I'm gonna try to dominate some of the center of the board by doing that. Yeah, flank the, that side of the board. That's sure. totally fine. Now you're bringing your knight out, okay. Yep. So at this point... Oh, I just realized that I missed a move. And... Like an idiot. You missed a move? Yeah. Good hint. I just wasn't paying attention. So, I don't know what the move was you're talking about, but my thought is... I want to do this. So that's a good move. Yeah. That's called a... Because I've now... I can take this guy, or if you move... I can go straight for your queen. Exactly. So yeah. it's called a pin or a skewer. Um, it's pretty annoying. A lot of times the right move is to just slide this bishop out and protect my queen, and then I can move this knight again, no problem. Um, but the move that I missed is this pawn's totally unprotected, and I actually have my bishop attacking it directly. Uh... So what you just did is what they in the chess world called hanging a piece. So you left a piece out that was being attacked without protecting it, um, and that is also check. So, yep. you, so you need to protect your king. Ooh, I've already gotten checked. But look, I'm already thinking, I got an idea. I'm gonna do this. What do you think about that? So that's a good move. I put my knight here, so if you wanna go after my king or queen, basically you gotta take my knight and my king and queen can kill you. Totally, so it's protected. Uh, the unfortunate thing is this thing is locked here until this moves. That's right. Um, which is really annoying for you. Like, it's not fun. And, <laughs> like, in this position, you're going to try to get your king castled, which means you got to get this knight out and you got to get this bishop out somehow, and you're just kind of claustrophobic. Now, castled means he's just surrounded too much, huh? So basically what castling is, is if your king has is not in check, and if your king has not moved yet, and your rooks have not moved, you can move two spaces over and bring your rook over, and that counts as one move. What? And I've can, never heard of that. You've never heard of castling. What's well, this? That's a crazy. Are there any other wild moves like that? I don't know about. There is, is another wild move that you don't know about, and the other one is you move the king two spaces over, and then the rook over like that. And the reason you do that is you get your king out of the dead center of the board where all the fighting is happening, and you protect it behind these pawns. Okay. And I think everybody in the world except you knows about castling. Got it. Just kidding. But, <laughs> but like In the chess world, for in the, sure. In the chess world, yeah. So in the beginning of the game, take control of the center, get your bishops out, get your knights out, and then it opens up a path for your king to get to king safety through a castle, more times than not. So the metaphor is protect what's most valuable to you first yeah. and then go on the offensive. Yes. This is Sun Tzu. This is the art of non-doing. This is the art of waiting for your opponent's weakness rather than being aggressive. Yeah. There are things called gambits. I'm sure you've heard of a queen's gambit, king's gambit, where you sacrifice... I'm sure I have too. You sacrifice pieces in the beginning so that you have a better attack so you can try to checkmate them before they castle and before they can get protected. Oh, so that's the Blitzkrieg method. Whew. I don't know who I am. Am I a gambit or am I a castler? We'll see. I'm a castler. I'm a ca you're a castler. Yeah, all day. So, it seems like the best thing to do would be to get this guy in position. Yeah, that's solid. That's your solid. best move, and it's because you could have gotten me here. Totally, and you've got a fully open file, which is probably your biggest asset in your position. Because mm -hmm. this is cramped and that's not comfortable for you. Yes. So I'm just going to castle because that's a very logical move. Very logical. So I'll help you out a little bit. Yeah. Um, this knight. That's what I was going to do. Is always good here. That's what I was going to do. Let the record show. It's a great move. And then your king is cramped. Your king needs to castle. This is getting pinned down. It's kind of uncomfortable for you. This knight, this knight can hop over this piece, so that's no problem, but you need to get this bishop out of the way so you can protect your king. You have to do that one of two ways. You bring either this pawn forward, the standard is bringing the pawn over one. This is called a fianchetto. And, huh. and then you've got some really nice, this knight comes out and it also reveals an attack with this bishop hiding behind it. 
So it's, it's kind of a nice position, and it's a very safe position for your king. It just takes longer to do than like your standard pawn opening, throw the bishop out, throw the knight out, castle, and move four. If you're a beginner, it's very easy to push your king pawn first, get your bishop out, get your knight out, and castle on move four, and then your king is really safe, it happened really quick, and then you can just focus on attacking, and you don't have to get checkmated. All right, I mean, if that's all I learned from this experience and video, that's good. This move first or this move first? My instinct was to do this, because it might give me options. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna do this. So I am going to do as you said here. Fienchero. Fienchero. What language is that? I think it's Italian. Sounds Italian. It, it sounds, sounds like French and Spanish just made sweet love. It sounds very Italian. Okay. As the game goes on, okay. people get quieter, don't they? So I'm going to push this pawn forward one and just see what your intentions are with that bishop. <laughs> what are your intentions with my bishop? Thing. There is a right answer here. There's a right answer. Okay, I was going to say there's a couple things. So the options here are destroy this pawn yep. and put myself at risk from this guy, and I don't want to lose a bishop. Well, yeah, and I would take that back. Yeah. But the fun thing about that is all of a sudden now you see my king is totally undefended, and the whole purpose of castling was to have these pawns in front of my king and have it protected. Oh, um, so you're saying that would have been a good sacrifice to make. Um, not necessarily. Well, the other option is this. I go for you, and I've got you here, but at least I got a high value piece. Yeah, and I would come back and I would take it with the queen, and basically I would be slightly up on that trade because your bishops were 3.2 and my knights were three, and we trade a bishop for a knight, which is not ideal for you, but it's not the end of the world. All right, well, I'll let you give me an advantage then. It's kind of fun, right? This is kind of fun when you start stacking them up. I'll put this here so you can see. We know that I'm winning. <laughs> well, let's see. So uh, who's the guy who's got the new Netflix documentary? He's a young guy, Grandmaster level now. And he's been training his whole life. They, they keep calling him the new Bobby Fischer. Yeah, I thought of the obvious intuition. Gary Kasparov was ranked number one in the world. This boy had a hell of a talent. It's called Magnus. Do you know about this young kid? Oh, Magnus. That guy's arguably the greatest chess player of all time. Really? And he's been the world number one for about seven years now. Magnus Carlsen gets asked, they'll just show a random board like this and say, do you know what game this is? And Magnus Carlsen goes, oh yeah, that was 1992 in Amsterdam with these two people playing. Who got the Sevilla? Vortier, Tornschler, S6. Who is 6, Dronning, F5, Matt. Who is 9, Dronning, E8, Matt. Matt. And he has 10,000 games that he knows exactly that deep. Yeah, Magnus Carlsen was, I think he was like 14 or 15 when he played the world number one at the time, who was also arguably the best chess player of all time at that moment, Gary Kasparov. Kasparov, that's right. Kasparov ended up becoming like a big mentor to Magnus Carlsen, and there's Bobby Fischer, yeah. Gary Kasparov, and Magnus Carlsen that are like arguably the most dominant players of their time for that's different true. reasons. And now there's some young girls, too, who are, like, hitting the top highest levels. There are, yeah, girls are getting better and better and better. And it's, like, there's a lot of sexism in chess for a really long time. But there's just no proof at all that women aren't as good or as analytical as men in chess. It's just men are so overrepresented in chess that they have, like, 99.8% of, like, the chess population. There's, there's a woman named Judith Pulgar, and she had a dad that was... A chess grandmaster. Yes. And he decided as an experiment to make Judith Pulgar and her sister to become chess grandmasters. And Judith Pulgar at her prime was number nine in the world of men and women. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that's ever happened. And when you watch Judith Pulgar games, she is insane. On Gary, you can see it very well. With his body language, his movements, he's shaking his head, uh, holding his head. What do you think of this? Uh, Male or female? 
That chess? Yeah. I think that what you said about Barbara Fisher and uh, what's the other Carson out there, uh, my conclusion is, is that the memory bank. And who got the best memory bank? I say women's do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you made your move here. Yep. I'm gonna flip these. My first castle. Castle ever. Outstanding. He made four good moves in a row. Hey. I don't know where that came from. I don't know how he figured that out. I'm pretty good at learning things, but I don't know a lot of things about a lot of things yet. Outstanding. Okay. Um, I should probably develop my bishop. Develop your bishop. That's well, what I always say. I'm gonna do the knight first. I'm going to apply some pressure to this piece. I like it. You like that move? I like it, okay. for sure. So this guy's gotta make a choice. Yeah, it's a little annoying. How do you like that piece? It's a good move. Surprisingly. Hey. It's a good move. That's fine. Interesting. Oh, you see? Snap. You see what I'm doing? Uh, I'm gonna take this pawn now. Yes, I figured you would. Okay, you'll never, <laughs> you'll never see this coming. But you did the attack that I told you about, where you take a piece that's seemingly weaker. Yes, I'm trying to learn. And, and you're trying, and then I take this. Yep. And then I'm like, hey, I'm up too. And then all of a sudden you swing in and you take this thing. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. Like that's an outstanding move. Ex nice. Except you missed one thing. Ah. My knight can move two forward and take this knight. Okay. Which is the piece that you were trying to attack. Mm. But for the sake of me beating you, I'm just gonna take the bad move and then you can take that pawn. I could take that pawn or I could do something you may not have considered, which is take this bishop. Oh, I didn't even consider that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me too many of your secrets. Let's go. That's great. That's great. Good job. Thanks, man. I like this. It feels like a massage in my brain. I'm proud of you. That was great. Appreciate it. Very interesting. That's so sick. I'm so proud of him for making a move <laughs> that I didn't consider. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Sacrificing a stronger piece for a weaker piece to reveal an attack on that piece that was protecting it. That's sick. Ah. Uh. Devin's got a knack for this. Thanks, man. All right, now your weakness here and do this. I dig it. I push this rook up one and just protect that pawn. Mm. <laughs> he created a threat, I defended the threat. Yeah, that is good. You just gave me a check. No, not a check, a queen check. I'm nervous, he's staying close because I'm not letting him mess up. I'm just bringing this guy forward. Your brain feels different when you're playing this. I can't think of a, it's really fun, right? an activity that's this engaging. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to do this. He just got up a rook. Checkmate. Wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> what happened? So what happened the last two moves is, I was getting greedy. But then I got the cute little idea. I'm like, oh, I guarantee Devin as a newbie is gonna see this unprotected piece and take it no matter what, because he's That's so right. greedy. I was greedy. Because I've got this queen ah! taking this back row. And if he takes the rook. <laughs> I hate this stupid game. <laughs> but dude, great game. I great can't, game. I can't believe you pulled a tactic on me and got an extra pawn back. Yeah. I saved you from a lot of blunders, but like yeah. the fact that you saw that move yeah, and you pulled the trigger on it, knowing how little you know about chess is crazy. And, yeah. and it was fun. I just want to say like, I'm, I think a lot of people play chess because they're like, I need more logical reasoning skills or I should work on my brain. It's not about that. It's just fun. It's just engaging. It's, it's warfare. It's, like, a, it's almost a spiritual practice for me. Like it's, it sounds weird, but like, What's the point of meditation? The point of meditation is to find a singular focus that gets you outside of your head and gets you more present and in tune with your body. What are you doing when you're playing chess? Yes. I can't be focusing on the wind or the people swinging out there. I can't be focused on the people walking by. I have to put all my brain power here or I'm gonna get crushed. And that singular focus gives me peace. And then as we do it over and over and over and over again, we find like 
sheer joy. I've played it so many times and found singular focus so many times that it's like an act of joy for me now. In terms of how present it makes you, what other game do you see? Like everybody who plays chess, they look like this. You know, it's like a little kid watching their uh, pizza roll go around in the microwave. Like, it's that level of focus. Like, they because must get so much nose breath on each other. Just like <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is a meme on the internet that every chess game, uh, it's not a chess tournament if there isn't somebody coughing profusely in the background. <laughs> Watch watch any chess tournament, like a live where you're watching all four hours, there's always one guy going, ah! If there's a chess community watching this, they know it's true. Yeah. Always. What can you learn from chess? What can you learn from stock trading on Robin Hood? What can you learn from visiting a bear? These are actual things, seeing a tank. These are actual things we have in rotation. I'm for excited this channel. for the tank video. That's gonna be sweet. <laughs> the tank's gonna be good. Basically, anybody who's interesting or does something different that I don't know about, I wanna talk to them, and every time I do, they drop some wisdom bomb, like a microphone on stage that just shatters my life in the best way. So please, like and subscribe, follow Jackson at For The Memoir, and uh, we'll catch you next week.